and welcome to SAP TechEd 2022. My name is Frank Jensch. I'm the project lead of SAP BTP ABAP environment. For this session, I'm joined by Paul and Tunes from Taxera Technologies. Hi, Paul. Hi, Frank. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Paul Antunes, Chief Product Officer of Texera Technologies. Back to you, Frank. Paul will share with us in a couple of minutes his experiences about the ABAP environment and how Texera Technologies developed the solution on top of this platform. I would like to start explaining the context of this session. It's all about extending ERP core applications. It's about extending ERP core applications by using the ABAP platform. There is one common ABAP platform innovation code line, which is used for S4HANA as indirect shipment and as direct shipment for our separate product on SAP business technology platform. The official name of this separate product is SAP PTP ABAP Environments, but I will use the short name Steampunk because it's easier to use. Steampunk introduced the cloud development model, which is basically the usage of ABAP development tools, the ABAP RESTful application programming model and Fiori instead of SEAD, DUNPO and SAPGUI. These principles are not new. It's just a consistent continuation of what we offered in the most, uh, in the must learn topics in the last couple of years. It's basically the focus on user experience, making use of uh, Fiori, making use of the HANA capabilities, uh, improving the developer efficiency by making use of the ABAP development tools and also applying cloud principles, especially enforcing the usage of released objects. So let us quickly go through the agenda of this today's sessions. I will start with the positioning of Steampunk, uh, followed by the latest news. Paul will give us an overview about the solution built by Taxera Technologies. And last but not least, I will explain the roadmap. So in order to understand the positioning of Steampunk, I would like to start the explanation of the main characteristics of Steampunk. So first of all, Steampunk is nothing else than the platform as a service offering for ABAP. The ABAP technology layer is intended to develop and run standalone apps and side-by-side -side apps. It comes with an HANA database automatically included in this offering. So for the development environment, the ABAP development tools are mandatory to develop ABAP related objects. The ABAP language version is cloud optimized and for enforces, for example, the usage of released objects. The ABAP RESTful application programming model is the leading and recommended programming model. And uh, Steampunk is completely relying on SAP Fiori, which means uh, we are making use also of the SAP Fiori tools for the UI development. We are also providing a lot of tools to ensure the code quality of the developed custom code, and especially with the usage of ABAP test cockpit ATC. It's very important to mention uh, that the ABAP systems are operated by SAP. It means that all lifecycle management events like upgrades and patches are managed by SAP and SAP is also responsible for the system availability. The product was launched four years ago and in the meanwhile, Steampunk is also available as a shared trial offering and also part of the free tier offering of BTP. What are the main use, usage scenarios of Steampunk? So Steampunk is intended for customers to develop and run loosely coupled side-by-side -side extensions. Uh, this follows the principle of keeping the core clean and has main advantages in the area of separating new user groups from the core application, having separate uh, release cycles of the developed custom code. And it's also possible to consume the newest and greatest technology features because the platform is upgraded automatically by SAP. 
The second important main usage scenario is uh, for partners. So partners have additional requirements because they need to develop and run multi-tenancy enabled SaaS applications for their customers. So it means they need multi-tenancy in order to reduce the infrastructure costs. And they also need additional tools uh, for the lifecycle management and also for the application management, because this is in the responsibility of the partner, but these tools are provided by Steampunk. And last but not least, and this is very important for me, we should also eat our own dog food. Uh, and it means Steampunk is also used SAP internally, uh, which means, for example, for SAP products like BW Bridge as part of the Data Warehouse Cloud, market communication for utilities, cloud edition of master data governance, and also sales solutions by Vistex. According to the success of Steampunk in the last couple of years, we are evolving the ABAP strategy for s Cloud with so-called embedded Steampunk. In order to explain the term embedded Steampunk, I would like first to explain uh, the main two pillars of the Steampunk uh, product. So first of all, Steampunk uh, consists of the product offering itself plus the feature set which is offered by that product. So when the feature set means the ABAP development tools, the ABAP language version with released objects and also the RAP programming model. So and now we incorporated the second pillar, so the feature set into S4HANA. So and this means that now in S4HANA Cloud, we have now a, a new feature, a new feature set for developer extensibility and in S4HANA, an additional extensibility option. Again, the sweet spot and the main purpose of Steampunk remains exactly the same. So Steampunk on BTP is intended for loosely coupled side-by-side -side extensions and applications for customers and multi-tenancy enabled SaaS applications for partners. So this remains completely the same. This is unchanged. What we now added, is uh, this developer extensibility for S4HANA, uh, which uh, uses exactly the same feature set from Steampunk, which was introduced four years ago. And in order to explain this a bit more from an S4HANA cloud perspective, I would like to explain these extensibility patterns in more detail. So it starts with the side-by-side -side approach, which means that the side-by-side -side application calls the remote APIs from the S4HANA cloud system. And now um, the second option is the so-called on-stack option for S4HANA cloud, which is newly introduced with embedded Steampunk. With that approach, now it's possible to build new apps within the S4HANA cloud stack, which calls local APIs of the S4HANA cloud system. But this orange box follows exactly the same principle like within Steampunk, because um, it's the enforcement of using released local APIs. And the third option is extending SAP delivered apps by predefined extension points, which are also released. So these are the, the new options and it's simply a perfect fit of uh, the different scenarios for side-by-side -side extensions and also on-stack extensions with Steampunk. You can find further information about Steampunk and Embedded Steampunk in this blog post by Harald Cook. And now I would like to explain a bit more about the latest news of what we delivered in the last two releases. And in order to understand our release strategy, we need to understand that we are delivering features on a quarterly basis. And the detailed schedule of these releases is explained in this blog post. So we are uh, describing our innovations uh, as release notes in the SAP BTP What's New section and also in regular blog posts by Florian Wahl. And I would like to summarize the most important uh, features which we delivered in the last two releases now. So in the May release, we delivered an extension of the RAP generator for business configuration. We enhanced the managed software component app for lifecycle management. And we have now the option also to transport business roles. In the August release, we delivered, and it's very important, the event consumption and exposure. We are now able uh, to provide the extensibility for the ABAP RESTful application programming model. 
we are making use of the um, HANA native storage extension. This enables customers and partners to persist their custom data in a cheaper part of the HANA. We are now also able to support the upload and evaluation of uh, Excel files. And another completely different topic, we are now supporting also five additional data centers on AWS, which increases our regional coverage of Steampunk. So besides this uh, continuous quarterly feature delivery, and you, you can also see that we are normally, we yeah, have delivered 25 to 40 or 50 additional features. We can also say that Steampunk together with RAP is now mature to develop enterprise ready business applications. Uh, as I said, there's um, this, this second main um, usage, usage scenario for partners. So, and for partners, we um, uh, introduced also a blog post describing the uh, different solution partner models and the implications about the commercial models and the system landscape setup. And what does it mean? Which kind of systems need to be created and so on for whole development and uh, productive landscape for partners. And this is a perfect uh, topic and fits exactly uh, to our next section, to our next topic, uh, where uh, Paul will explain how Taxera Technologies developed the solution on top of Steampunk. So with that, I would like to hand over to Paul. Thank you, Frank, and welcome everyone. Taxera Technologies is a Swiss-based company that provides a global indirect tax solution for our clients. We have offices spread around the world, mainly in Spain, Germany, and India, with headquarters based in Switzerland in the Zurich area. We are a cloud-first platform using the B2P application to allow us through the multi-tenancy concept to meet compliance needs on a global scale, to allow our clients to move from a tactical local approach to a truly global approach, single vendor, single platform, to meet your compliance needs from Japan to Europe to Latin America, as well as North America. So a truly global application that allows you to meet those requirements today and for the future. The indirect tax world today is going through a substantial change. Some people will call it a tsunami where companies have to report data on a daily basis in real time Authorities now have the power to cross-check your VAT returns, to your financial statements, to your invoicing in real time, not only on a country by country basis, but also on a global scale. This in companies then therefore have to ensure that they can meet those requirements and data submitted in a timely fashion and correctly. The power of BTP allows us to provide the service today and also expand into future functionality to ensure that as the tax authorities get more aggressive in collecting data and ensuring that compliance meets our need and address the VAT gap, we can then meet those needs to the BTP platform. In terms of our architecture, we use the BTP platform to extract data from ECC systems, S4 systems, bring it into Taxera on the B2P platform, transform the data, and then provide the data to the tax authorities in a non-intrusive manner with no additional code required for the clients on their system, no changes to the business process, ensuring that we have real compliance in real time through the B2P platform. And now we'll showcase that through our demo and hope you enjoy the demo. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Taxera Demo on our global indirect tax platform built on SAP BTP platform. Today we'll demo a very high level overview of our three main products, the e-invoicing cockpit, the SAFTI cockpit, as well as the Interstat cockpit. This is our standard look and feel under the Taxera design. You're also able to switch between a Taxera own theme, such as the one you see here today, or a SAP standard Fiori um, theme. Switching across to a normal SAP standard theme, as you can see here, the SAP logo appears, and this is our e-invoicing cockpit that can operate it across the globe, and it can be either used, uh, in this case, for Spain, or depending on the selection screen, one can choose different company codes, which is, of course, then tied to a different uh, mandate, such as Italy, Brazil, Mexico, Australia, 
all from a single cockpit, you're able to manage all your invoicing operations around the world. In this case, we're talking about B2G, but B2B as well, B2C, anything to do with invoicing, not only in classical invoicing is transferring data to uh, clients, so uh, peer-to-peer, but also to the tax authorities and the governments. And you can see here, this is done on a classical Fury app. If a customer submits an invoice, in this case, we can track statuses, we can track country, we can check company codes, classical functionality around sorting and descending all the peers. Clients are able to also drill down into the data and then they can view header details, the GL details or the details of this invoice and a full uh, order tracking as well until the, the document's been submitted to the tax authorities. As one can see here, there's approval received from the tax authorities. So really in, within BTP, a single global cockpit on the cloud and there's a SaaS platform that you're able to manage your entire invoicing processes around the world. Switching to a Taxera theme application, what we see here is a safety cockpit. This again is the same approach, single cockpit for all countries around the world that operate uh, safety, uh, slightly, do, uh, slightly different look and feel, uh, action activities, ability to download right across the platform, and also the filtering capabilities in this case um, at company code level, country and, uh, and user ID. To create a safety return, one simply has to click on the create button on the top the right hand side and then immediately the system proposes which countries are within scope of safety. As soon as one of these countries is selected, the model is then selected from the underlying backend and then we can then progress with the process. In this case then one selects the company code the system picks up the company code relevant to that client and then we select which return needs to be done for the safety return. In this case, we will select January 22 and then we'll proceed. There's already an extraction. The system warns you, but you can still go in and you can see now the way the cockpit works in that there's an extraction layer, data quality and preparation, safety generation as well as review, submit, and archiving. So a very integrated process through CPI and BTP directly into our uh, customers' uh, systems. And this can be an SAP customer or a non-SAP customer. This is the beauty of BTP, one of the key uh, differentiators for Taxera that we're able to integrate not only with SAP customers, both ECC and S4, but we can also integrate with non-SAP customers across our entire platform. And this is whether you're using e-invoicing, whether you're using SAFTI or using Intrastat or any of other reconciliation products, month-end, periodic reporting, data analytics, everything is on the BTP platform for Taxera. Today we are just showcasing three of our main products. In terms of the journey, again, very easy, click back home. Users are able to add apps which they have access to their own cockpit. Alternatively, if you have higher access, uh, as I'm demonstrating here today, you then have the ability to manage employee master data, access management, security, and so on. And then you can have special applications for any of those. You may also notice in, in some of our applications, when I go to the application itself, this is then all the applications that are uh, created by Taxera for the purpose of configuring the platform. And we see that not only for the safety cockpit, but also for invoicing and interest at where things need to then be configured on the Taxera backend, all within BTP. And if we now go into uh, the interest at application, where we can showcase how that works, uh, again, a fairly sophisticated product. The look and feel is the same as you saw in the safety application. We have a, a generic cockpit that allows the user, in this case, to manage any interest at declaration across the European Union. The system does two main things. One is integrate into your SAP uh, system and pull out all the relevant data using BAPIs or APIs, depending on your system, whatever the integration mechanism is, we can use CPI to do that. And then we have the ability to pull out not only the interest at relevant data, but the VAT return. If you're executing a VAT return 
uh, within Taxera and then the ability to reconcile the two. And this is something that's very useful for the business users is that uh, in this case, they, we will generate the Interstat data. So this is actually the Interstat uh, report and the movement types as well as the data that is needed for the Interstat reporting. We then query the VAT report. So if you've done the VAT report, Taxera brings that data all within our interest act cockpit and then at the bottom we'll see a reconcile button we automatically reconcile the data in real time between your interest act report and your vat reporting to ensure that we are able to submit the data knowing that there are no known differences between the two data sets or if there are differences we're then able to identify them and explain why we have those differences. And you see in this case, we've got some differences. We know that Interstrat, for example, in the first document's got a zero value, and then in the VAT return 5,000, we can drill down and we know exactly which document creates the difference. So as you can see, in summary, VDP has allowed us to build a global platform and scale internationally, not only for e-invoicing safety, we have many other applications such as operational reconciliation that allows e-invoicing on a global scale to be reconciled in real time between the e-invoicing cockpit and your financial data. And we have this kind of pro monthly reconciliation as well where the users are able to then reconcile much larger data sets. The BGP in summary has allowed Taxera to build a global platform uh, that allows us to manage taxations and our clients to manage global indirect taxation. Uh, essentially what the SAP projects tend to call project localization within a single platform um, in real time, 100% on the cloud and no impact to your business processes, no impact to your systems. It does not require any code. It does not require any additional changes to your business processes. There are no Z programs or anything that needs to be added to your um, SAP ECC or S4 system to get the two systems to talk to each other and provide your tax function, your finance function, as well as your RT function, a single global pit stop to manage taxes globally. We hope you've enjoyed the presentation and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you very much, Paul, for these insights. I really appreciate to continue our collaboration. Now I would like to move on to the roadmap, uh, what we are focusing on in the next releases. So in the area of the reuse services, we plan to provide data archiving. And in the infrastructure area, we plan to provide more data centers and more cloud qualities. As this overview session is uh, just an overview about Steampunk, uh, I would like to refer to the communities section in the SAP communities area. So this is uh, the Steampunk landing page, which provides uh, learning material, links to tutorials and further videos. And I would like to summarize the content of this session in this session, I wanted to explain the positioning of Steampunk for side-by-side -side applications, positioning of embedded Steampunk uh, to develop on stack extensions within s Cloud, the quarterly release cycle of Steampunk, the statement that Steampunk together with Rapp is now mature to develop enterprise-ready business applications and our product direction towards more data centers and cloud qualities. So you can find more information, more ticket sessions in the SAP community area, uh, including further learning tutorials and so on. And uh, in case of further questions, don't hesitate to contact us via email. And with that, thank you very much for your attendance and enjoy the rest of the ticket. Thank you.